Hi guys. Tea. We need tea. So guys, I've just been for a walk with my wife, my lovely wife. We did a two mile walk. She's just taking Tino to the dentist. Tino has got bad teeth, so he's getting sorted. Um, too many sweets, guys. Too many sweets. Um, so, hi, Diana. Hi, Pamela. Hi. hi. Um, hope everyone is well. Um, I have tried to message everyone. We're going to go through the same old spiel, aren't we? It's me just saying to everyone that we're live, which is really annoying. So, um, but we have to do it. Let's just... Uh, Let's go on to the Defending Elvis chat, if I can find it. Now, I hope you got yourself a cup of tea. It's always the same, guys, just a few of us, Pamela and Diana and me, all alone, no one to talk to, and then suddenly, loads of people. Okay. Uh, I remember, guys. <clears throat> I remember when I used to do lives completely on my own, completely on my own. I would do a live. There'd be no one listening, no one watching. And then I would post it. They were usually around 45 minutes long. But then the next day, there'd be three or 400 views. So I was like, oh, some people like the lives. We had we didn't have any community of people at all and it started very small we had a few on we had one or two on uh diana we've done one live this morning the whole point of this morning's live was for me to say to you guys that we have to defend elvis in a respectful way so we don't hate on priscilla too much because i don't want to go to bed at night feeling that i've been mean and horrible and nasty to Priscilla. I want to know that we are um, being, we are defending Elvis and his bloodline, Lisa Marie, Riley, Finley, Harper, um, Benjamin, Tupelo, Gladys and Vernon. I want to know that when we do defending, I'm not coming across as this real nasty, horrible person. So I, that the whole point of my life this morning was to say that clearly to people that we have to do it with respect so i titled the name of that video uh defending with respect yeah we're not trying to hate on priscilla and call her names and draw funny pictures of her looking weird that's not us that's for other people that's for other channels here we do it from a kind heart we do it with the, with the hope that she will come to the table and apologize at, with regret. We do it with the hope that we will get noticed by the big boys, Sky News, CNN News, and that they will change their story, their narrative when they talk about Elvis based on the things they're learning from the defending Elvis type channels like Rare Elvis Photos. Yeah, so <clears throat> my point is, guys, <clears throat> sorry, my point is, guys, I, I have to be able to sleep at night and I won't sleep at night if I'm being nasty, evil, cruel. So we defend with respect. Hi, Vicenzo. Um, so Linda has sent me something. Linda, um, she's emailed me. Um, um, she's reviewed some books and she knows I'm not going to just sit here and read out a whole book. She's broken it down into a smaller version. I think a couple of pages. She did say she can't make it. So I'm going to read her email. So have you got your cups of tea? We've got an hour, an hour, unless it could be less because if the kids, if, Tino turns up with the wife. I'm going to have to go. So I'm hoping we've got an hour. 
Uh, Diana, thank you. And I'm I'm so glad you were here right at the beginning, right in the early days. You're you're not you're you're like what do we call the people that came here at the beginning that like six months ago, five, six months ago? What should we call you? <clears throat> Diana, you can pick the name. What shall we call the defending Elvis people that were here five and a half months ago? What should we call them? I'm surprised Deb Deborah's not here. Deborah, wake up. Deborah, wake up. Wake up. Um, so I've just had a big omelette. I quickly cooked myself a cheese omelette, which fits within my diet, the keto carnival diet. So let's find this email from Linda. Now, I have not read it. I have not read it. I'm even not that clued up um, of what's in it. You know that I've been looking up Steve Peck. Diana, were you here this morning? I can't remember. I've been trying to find out what Steve Peck looks like, the dance instructor that Priscilla was unfaithful with. Is it going to see if it's going to focus on it? And we even found a video of him dancing. Diana, were you here this morning? I can't remember. We even found a video of Steve Peck dancing. Yeah, when he was old. Shall I just very quickly just play a few seconds of it? Here we go. in it that's steve peck 71 year old steve peck the guy that priscilla had an affair with six to eight weeks after lisa marie was born does that interest anyone but it's quite an unusual thing but let's just have a look here then guys so um i'm gonna read right i'm gonna read the email from um let's have a look let me find it now, it's a bit long, but it's not crazy long from lovely Linda. Uh, so, OK, and the title is. Uh, well, do you know what? I can't even give you a title. Oh, we are, we are. A summary of the Shirley book. Info to link about document attached. Same as info as is email is easier if you print. Right. OK. So she sent me the document as well to print, but I'm not going to do that. I'm going to read it. Now, I know nothing about Shirley. <clears throat> so we're going to learn together about Shirley. Right. OK. I've topped my tea up. So we're going to do a bit of reading. I was thinking about also reading chapter 18 of Elvis and Me, but I'm not sure if we're going to have enough time to, to do that. So. This is for you, Linda. Linda, thank you for taking part. I mean, sorry, for putting the time in to create this email. Uh, Vibex, you're here. Hi, Vibex. Um, so I did quickly reply to you, Vibex. Um, yeah, Vibex asked me an interesting question. She, um, she was asking um, about, obviously, the fact that we were saying that Priscilla uh, had has always said that they had that Elvis and Priscilla had sex on the night of the wedding. She's always said that, hasn't she? And we've always believed her that Lisa Marie is saying that, no, it happened when she was 18. <clears throat> now, um, right. Okay. The so we're going to read about, we're going to read about Shirley and Joe Esposito and Elvis. Yeah. So, uh, the Bex asked me a really, really simple question. Uh, and that is why would someone lie? Would someone say that it happened that they that Elvis and Priscilla had sex when they were eighteen? Or is it true 
that they that Elvis and Priscilla had sex on the night of the the wedding. Yeah, the night of the marriage. Yeah, when when she was nearly twenty one, um, and she was asking me, and if so, why? If so, why? Yeah, and th this is what I say. I say, I'm going to believe Lisa Marie. One of the questions she that Vivek said to me. I hope you don't mind me talking about this, Vivek. Yeah. One of the questions that Beck said to me was, um, well, how would Lisa Marie know? Um, because she wasn't there. Yeah. Obviously it happened before she was born. Yeah. <laughs> Just before. Um, and I would say, because her mum told her. That simple. Come on. Come on. Let's think about it, guys. They they had long periods where they were very close. I've seen the interviews. Even in, even in the book, from here to the great unknown that Lisa Marie wrote, put on tape, you know, and Riley finished. You can see that they had many times when Lisa Marie and Priscilla got on very well and were close. Yeah, they weren't complete enemies. They didn't hate each other. You you always love your mum, don't you? Whether you get on or not, whether you've got differences, whether you disagree, whether wrongdoing has happened, you still love your mum, do you? Like my dad was difficult, I still love my dad, yeah? So uh, my answer to Vivex is, um, I think Priscilla told her the truth, that really that they'd had sex when she was 18. And I didn't see the big deal anyway. I don't think there's anything wrong with a, a man in his, a man having sex with an 18 year old. 18 isn't a child, 18 is an adult. You can get married, have ch kids, have a family at 18. Now, do I recommend that um, people, um, have sex with a man in his 30s when would it actually would Elvis have been in his 30s? Um, I don't really I, I don't really see it as a big deal. Yeah. I don't it's it's not ideal, but it's not a big deal. Remember, my wife's a lot younger than me, but my wife was 22 when I met her. Yeah. So I don't I don't see the big deal. I don't see the big deal. Now, what I will say this. What I will say, uh, the Bex, um, is, uh, how can I say it? There's another question that you asked in your in your email. I hope you don't mind me talking about this. I'm just um, giving you your reply, yeah? Well, um, the Bex, yeah, you were wondering who told Lisa. Well, it, it was Priscilla, isn't it? It had to be. It had to be Priscilla. But... Um, I just want to say this, that you also asked me, why would um, <clears throat> Priscilla lie and say it was on the night of the wedding when they first had sex with Elvis? And my answer to you is this, because it keeps up with the story. It keeps the fairy tale alive. Remember, Priscilla cannot believe that the whole world in 1985, believed every word of this book that she invented. This book was written by Priscilla. Everything in this book is Priscilla. Elvis had nothing to do with this book. Elvis had been dead seven years. This book was written by someone who was unfaithful and divorced Elvis and robbed him blind in the divorce settlement. Yeah? So you got to remember... This woman, Priscilla, I'm not being hateful. I'm just telling the truth. She wrote a book about Elvis as if she was still his wife when he died. She wrote a book about Elvis as if she was his widow when he died. And she was not. She left Elvis four years before she died. She had many other boyfriends. Yeah. My point is this. This story, this fairy tale, this fake fairy tale this very fake fairy tale yeah remember um it said they had sex on the night of the wedding so she has to keep up the pretense of this book because this book has been her story from the age of i think in 1985 however old she was until today remember the film priscilla sophia coppola's film priscilla was based on this book. Barry Siegel, this is what Bridget Cruz told us, Bridget Cruz, the auctioneer that's in law, in a lawsuit with Priscilla. Bridget Cruz told me and us 
that Barry Siegel, the guy that ripped off Lisa Marie, the guy that was Lisa Marie's manager at Gracelands, that squandered tens of millions of dollars, that he brokered the deal to Sophia Coppola, the director, the filmmaker, so that Sophia Coppola would use this book as the storyline of the film Priscilla. Yeah, so this book, even to this day, is Priscilla's truth. Yeah, do we agree with that? Because the film was only made a year-ish ago, yeah, we know it flopped, but because the film Priscilla was based on this book, this is Priscilla's truth. We know it's not truth. We know that this book's full of lies and that Priscilla reinvented history when she wrote this book. She had a chance to do the right thing, but she didn't. She decided to use the book to make her look like the victim. Elvis looked like the bad guy. So one of the things in this book, this is for the Bex. One of the things in this book is that they had sex on the night of the wedding when she was 21. Yeah. And we've now found out from her daughter, Lisa, that no, she was 18. So we know that she's been lying. My answer to that is if she can lie about such a big thing, and that she can, it's a fundamental lie that she has repeated again and again. She even repeated it just after the Priscilla film was made when she was in that big room and she started crying. She even said it then. There was no sex before the marriage. There was no sex before the marriage. We got, we had sex on the night of the wedding. So we now know clearly Priscilla lied about her age. She was really, she was 18 when she had sex with Elvis, which completely changes everything to me, makes everything look different. Um, we now know that she's capable of lying to the general public, to interviewers on TV, in books, in documentaries, in biographies. We now know that Priscilla is capable of barefaced lying to the public, to the public again and again and again for decades. For decades, and that is why this is so important that we talk about it. Uh, the answer to your question, who told Lisa, is, is Priscilla. Has to be. Um, then you say, she also made Elvis look very good, a Christian, a good Christian man. No, she didn't. She didn't, um, Vivex. The whole world knew that Elvis was a good Christian man. The whole world knew. One of the most successful albums Elvis ever had was the gospel album. One of the most successful albums Elvis ever had was his gospel album. If anything, it may have even been his bestseller. So, no, the world knew that Elvis was a God-fearing Christian and had a Christian upbringing. The world knew. Come on, everyone knows. Even in 1985, the whole world knew Elvis's life story, his history, where he came from his humble upbringing in Tupelo. They knew um, that he was a very religious Christian man. Now, don't forget that this book, I, one more thing for the Bex, yeah? Now you mentioned that she put in here that Elvis was a good Christian man, yeah? Which she probably did, yeah? Priscilla put loads of good stuff in this book. Priscilla, wrote hundreds of things in this book that make Elvis look good. No, I'm not. No, we're not arguing, Vivex. We're not arguing. Please don't think that. Vivex, I love you. We are not arguing. I'm, I'm just answering your question. Please don't think I'm at, I'm at you. Um, that you don't need to be defensive with me. I'm on your side. Yeah, I'm on your side, Vivex. I'm answering a question. Now, this book um, is has hundreds of things in it that make Elvis look good. Yeah, lovely, beautiful, sweet little stories that make Elvis look good, all from Priscilla. Remember, she wanted this book to sell. She wanted this book to be a bestseller, to make her loads of money, to make her look like the victim. Yeah, she, this book had to please the fans. She tried to please the fans and get sympathy and act like the victim. Poor me, look what I went through. Elvis took drugs. Now remember the news, remember the news 
the t the tabloids the magazines the tv news clips were all portraying elvis as a drug addict as a womanizer as an adulterer binging on cheeseburgers yeah this is the portrayal of elvis so she she didn't disagree with any of those things did she she allowed this book didn't stop any of that if anything this book enhanced the fact the storyline the narrative going around the world of elvis being a druggy binging on cheeseburgers yeah um being a serial adulterer is still in this book isn't it but then she throws in all the sweet stories that make him look lovely and kind and generous and funny yeah and interesting and great to be with and all their good times they had together this book was created to be interesting to the to the whole world this book wasn't written for just elvis fans this book was written for everybody for the general public and the general public walked away from this book thinking that he could be cruel he had a bad temper he was a groomer a controller a pedophile um but it also said that he was beautiful and gifted and talented and generous and god-fearing and loving and and um sensitive yeah it said all the good and all the bad it did what it needed to do to become a bestseller this book has made priscilla a fortune for 40 years more or less for more or less 40 years all of the interviewers around the world have classed this book as reality as fact as truth yeah this is history as far as priscilla's concerned yeah now so she's not going to mess with that she's not going to mess with that story she will stick to that story throughout no matter who interviews her what country she will always stick to that story yeah so this is why she says um i was 21 when we had sex it was the night of the wedding because the story is all part of the fairy tale that many millions have fallen for many priscilla fans have fallen for that fairy tale yeah so you, you have to understand the game priscilla is playing now we're now starting to find out that there's more to it from books like this and books like this we're starting to understand that there's truth that isn't priscilla's truth that there's a different truth yeah and i will also say this if you watch all of the interviews of priscilla going way back to the 80s right up to date she always says nice stuff about elvis she always says loads of lovely nice kind things about elvis yeah always but then she throws in the negative stuff about her age about his adultery about his eating habits his drug habits his bad temper she felt like a prisoner a prisoner in graceland yeah she gives the impression that he forced her how to dress walk act sit um speak hair makeup shoes and as soon as you bring that into play people remember her age she gives the impression that she was with elvis from 14 until the day they got married no elvis briefly met her for six to eight weeks no six to eight no sorry two to six months in germany then he didn't see her for two and a half years maybe even three years yeah but she gives the impression that but when he met her just a friendship at the age of 14 she gives the impression that she would that was the day they got together that when elvis met her at age 14 they were together every day until they got married so that means that if elvis was with any other women he was unfaithful but they weren't together guys they were not together at 14. i don't believe any of the sexual parts of this book that says that elvis and her did sexual things in germany when she was 14. i don't believe it i think it's bullshit i think it's bullshit and no one can prove that they did she knows that when she wrote that book she knew no one could prove that went what went on behind closed doors in germany yeah now it doesn't make sense to me that elvis 
um, took advantage of her when she was 14 because he had other girlfriends. He had four or five other girlfriends in Germany. He was still seeing Anita Wood. So we don't know how much truth there is in that book. Now, I could be wrong. Elvis was no angel. Yeah, I could be wrong. But let's also throw in this. In the 1950s, it was completely normal for a man in his 20s to date a teenager. Now, I don't agree with it. I definitely do not agree with it. But in the 1950s, a man in his 20s dating a girl that was 16, 17, 18 was normal. Men wanted their girlfriend sweet and innocent. In the 50s, men wanted their girlfriend to not to have not been around. Now, some of you on here will know this that grew up through the 50s and 60s. Yeah. So. Well, Vivek, she did. She did. There's some very uh, Vivek's. There are some quite graphic details in that book. At one point, she even says Elvis withdrew himself from me. Elvis withdrew himself from me. Elvis fulfilled me in every way. Read the book. Read the book. She does say it. Uh, so, Elizabeth, I had a sister who got pregnant age 40. What I'm trying to say, guys, because I don't agree with it. I don't think a man in his 20s should sleep with a 14-year-old girl. I'm completely against it. But I will say this. In 1950, it was pretty normal to marry a girl 16. Pretty normal. You can't put the same rules of 2024 into 1959. You can't do that. That isn't fair to Elvis. Because if in Elvis's world, it was completely normal for men in their 20s to go out with a teenage girl, 16, 17, 18, and marry a girl, 16, 17, 18, then that's not fair to then go, oh, in 2024, you'd be classed as a paedophile. You get it, guys? You get what I'm saying. So we need to be fair. We don't want to paint Elvis out to be some sweet, innocent, shy virgin. We want to, We don't want to whitewash Elvis. We want to be real. And I'm telling you now, it wasn't unusual for rock stars, rock and roll stars, to be chasing the rock and roll singers, not just Elvis, the Beatles as well, the Rolling Stones. All of the rock and roll people that were around in the 50s and 60s were chased by teenagers. The teenagers were queuing up outside their house, houses, for autographs. Even the house in Germany, Elvis had a sign outside it which gave a time when the teenagers could queue up for autographs. It was just normal, guys. When Elvis did his concerts, wherever, it was all teenagers. Thousands of teenagers. So it was completely normal for Elvis to be surrounded by teenagers. It doesn't make him a paedophile. Right. Um, so anyway, the, to, to cut a long story short, um, we, how can I say it? We just have to remember that this is the 1950s, the 1960s, very different times. I say this almost Every girlfriend Elvis ever had was over 20. Almost every girlfriend he ever had was over 20. Almost. Yeah. Elvis didn't have this trail of 14 year old girlfriends. Didn't have it. And Priscilla didn't see Elvis after Germany for over two years, maybe even three years. Yeah. So I hope that answers um, Vivek's question. Vivek, no hard feelings. I love you. You're great, really important to me. You're really important on defending Elvis Presley. But I really, I, if someone asks me a question like that, I have to respond. I have to. Not, it could be anyone. It could be anyone. Let's try and read some of your comments, guys. Um, right. So, uh, uh, my observation, right, Tonya. Louis, right, let's have a look. Let me go back a bit. Sorry, I'm missing comments. Vivek, she also made Elvis look like a good Christian, which, which he was. Louis, if Priscilla was 18, Elvis would have been 28 years old. Yeah, but that's okay. Yeah? 
That what is wrong with that? What is wrong with a twenty-eight-year-old sleeping with an eighteen-year-old? I don't see the problem. But that, that is the censor. Do you think that's a problem? Um, my observation of P's character. P could have told Lisa another lie just for mind games. And E looked bad in Lisa Marie's eyes. I think she has a habit of constantly changing her narrative. I agree, Tonya. I agree. Now, remember, you mentioned the uh, Vicenzo, an 18-year-old sleeping with a 28-year-old. Come on. This is in the 60s, in the 1960s. That was completely normal. Completely normal. Tens of thousands of women at 18 years old were marrying 28 men in their 20s. It was completely normal. Uh, Vicenzo, I don't know how old you are, but I remember... I'm 57, and I remember it was pretty normal for men in their 20s to date teenagers. Pretty normal. And I remember the 70s, yeah? I think she loves keeping people in the dark, and so no one can ever tru know the truth. Of course, we we just assume that Lisa is telling us the truth. We do. We don't know. We don't know, do we? I actually think, I believe her, because I don't think... Priscilla Gaines. Priscilla, if, if Elvis slept with her at 18 or 21, if now it's coming out that Elvis slept with her at 18, well, isn't that to the detriment of Elvis? Doesn't that make Elvis look worse? So I'm supporting something that Lisa said that actually makes Elvis look worse, yeah? So I'm trying to be honest. I'm trying to be fair. If Lisa Marie said that Elvis slept with her mum at 18, age 18. I'm going to be fair and say that it's probably true. That's, I won't lie for Elvis. I won't lie for Priscilla. I'll try and say the truth that I I sense. Yeah? Um, let's have a look. Um, totally agree with you, Louis. Priscilla has lived off the Presley name and has always been out for herself loving the channel hi Lynn are you Lynn are you new welcome to team Elvis thank you very much you're very very welcome here we love new people are you new uh she does say that you can't believe most of the things she says I just I dispute most things that are in the book Elvis and me honestly guys for entertainment purposes I dispute many of the things she was telling a story that she made up. Now, of course, some parts of that story are true. You know, I'm not completely naive, but I think it's a, I think the whole thing is a con and the, and the public were conned. I think the whole thing tricked the public and the public were very gullible and fell for it, fell for the bullshit. And they fell for it for decades. This book was so successful. This book fooled so many people for so many decades, including important people, including um, interviewers, TV news companies, biographies, documentaries. This book did so well. She deserves a medal. Priscilla deserves a medal for just how well this book tricked the world. In my opinion, for entertainment purposes, it did its job very well. It's still doing its job well now. But the cracks are starting to show. The cracks are starting to show. And the cracks are, at the moment, these books. This is 1997. This is now. Yeah? These are the cracks. Right. Um, I don't believe Curry Grant just decided to pick her out of, and take her to Elvis at 40. No, but Pamela, great comment. I think this as well. How unlikely is it? that Curry Grant in Germany, who was friends with Elvis, would just walk up to her and go, hey, you, come with me. Let's go and see Elvis. Come on, guys. There's more to it. Come on. There's more to it. The book says that she had heard that he knew Elvis, that she approached Curry Grant. Yeah? So I agree, Pamela. I agree. She never said in a book that they did it when she was 14. Well, she, she did, Vivex. She did. She actually used the word withdraw. Go and read it. It's an interesting read. We're going to read chapter 18, but not yet. She keeps on changing her answer when asked what was her favorite song. And that sang that I last heard. And she said, yes, we, 
you're right, Mary, you're right. She does. I've seen different interviews where she changes the song. Well, I read her book probably a hundred times. It's in there. I've read it out on here. I've read it out. I don't know if your version is different than mine. It's very graphic. Very graphic. If someone give me the page, I would read it. But we don't know. If any of you want to send me the, the page, I'll read it for, for the Bex. It's quite disturbing. It says, he satisfied, he fulfilled me in all my desires. And then he withdrew. Yeah. Right. Um, uh, same in the 80s, Lou. I was a groupie. Yeah. So who's that? Let me just see. Yeah, I got I I went night clubbing in the 80s. I was a teenager in the 80s. Um my sister was in the 70s and she got pregnant 14. My other sex with a 16. My mother was 17. Read the book, and my mother-in-law was 15. So it's all very normal. Yes, thank Elizabeth, thank you. It's all guys. In the 60s and 70s and 50s, it was pretty normal to go out with girls 16, 17, 18. And do you know what? In the 50s, it could have been younger. It could have been younger. Now, it doesn't mean I agree with it. I don't agree with it. It just, things were different, different times. So Joe says, jo hi, Joe Hanley. I hope you're well. Welcome to Team Elvis. Hi, uh, hi Finola as well. Same in the 80s, Louis. I was a groupie around stars at 14. Stars? Joe, are you a Western Super Mare girl? Because stars is the name of the disco I went to. Um, in the, when I grew up in the town, I used to go to stars nightclub when I was 16 years old. Uh, are, you, are you from Western, Joe? Right, okay. Joe Hanley, right. Um, let's have a look. Um, let's keep going. Louis, he was still dating Anita Wood at the time. Yeah, I know he was, but but Vicenzo and other people. Don't forget, in 1960, he started making GI Blues. He was date. He may have been dating Juliet Prowse. Yeah, there's a number of other girlfriends. I know that many of you feel that he was besotted and in love with. Uh, Anita Wood, because she was so nice, she was so lovely. She gave up a lot for Elvis, yeah? They really did suit each other. But he didn't just date Anita Wood. He was dating quite a few girls. Remember, he still really classed himself as quite single, didn't he? But he still, he had, you know, he had the special ones. Like, Anita Wood was special to him, wasn't she? she I love Anita Wood. I think she's great. Uh, Vicenza, you're 52 years old. Yes, so... Um, so you you remember probably the the late seventies and eighties, yeah. I remember the early seventies. I worked in a cafe. No, I grew up in a small cafe, a very quiet back street cafe, and the waitresses. We had two or three waitresses, and they were all obsessed with David Cassidy. Um, and I remember the. Do, do you guys know David Cassidy? Yeah, of course you do. And I remember the waitresses. I was like four years old and they were all showing me pictures of David Cassidy. David Cassidy, guys. So I remember the early 70s very well. Uh, he, I mean, come on, let's face it. David Cassidy was very gifted, wasn't he? He was also dating Margot Berg in Germany. There we are, Vicenzo. And other people. Vicenzo, there were others. I don't think it makes Elvis look bad, to be honest. Nor do, nor do I. I think it's just pretty normal for that decade, for those decades. 18 is an adult. I agree. There's nothing wrong with sleeping with an 18-year-old girl. Don't forget, my wife was 22 when I met her. I was in my 30s. But I did look much younger than I am. I was a very young-looking man in my 30s. Yeah, I don't think I did anything wrong. Not at all. We had five kids. We're still together. We've been together 20 years, more or less. It's all, as long as it's legal, yeah, and done in the right way. Uh, well, that story makes it look like she wasn't pregnant when she got married because she hadn't slept, because they hadn't slept together. 
it does. But we think, don't we think it's very likely that she was pregnant? Um, it's very likely she was pregnant when they got married. We, you know, it's something that we all debate, isn't it? Yes, the huge age difference was very normal back then. When I was a teenager, 17, I married my first husband. He was 24. And if I had been 27, I would have still married him. Yeah, if he and if he had been 27, yeah, it was completely normal. Thank you, Tonya. And um, Louis, let's have a look. Look at a lot of people, especially the celebrities. Yeah. Now, look at, uh, let's have a look. Vicenzo, Louis, my mum was 16 and a half, and my father was 23 when they got married. There we are. Vicenzo, there we are. 1964. Come on. Elvis didn't do anything wrong. Elvis didn't do anything wrong. He's been, it's been portrayed by Priscilla. Yeah. And the interviews since the 1980s. Oh my God, Elvis was with a 14 year old. Never does she say, never does Priscilla say, oh yes, I was 14, but then I didn't see him for two and a half years. I didn't go to Graceland until I was 17. She doesn't really say it, not really. If the interview says to her, because I've seen loads of interviews, guys. If the interviewer says to her, oh, you met him when you were 14? She says, oh, yes, yes, I did. He poured his heart out to me. He spoke to me about his mother and that he thought he was going to be forgotten and he was worried about his movie career, if he was going to be any good. He'd made a couple of movies, but, you know, still a bit unsure. And he was all alone in Germany, and he was still grieving over the loss of his mother during um, basic training. This is what you'll hear from Priscilla. No mention of the fact that he briefly met her for a matter of months, and then he went back to do the Frank Sinatra show, the GI Blues film, and make three albums for RCA Victor. So she, Priscilla, will give the impression when the interviewer says, oh, you met him when you were 14, she will carry on the story and, go, and, and let it seem that she was with him every day from 14 till she moved to Graceland. She gives the impression that Elvis was dating a 14-year-old. She doesn't mention, not properly, that he buggered off. She does a little bit, but not. In not enough. Too many times I've seen interviews where she she brushes over it. She lets the interviewer do the question and then she allows the viewer to think, oh, they were together from 14 till they divorced. How many people, if you spoke to a non Elvis fan, how many of them think that Elvis was with Priscilla from 14 till they divorced in 1973? That's 14 years, mind. I would say most. I would say most people, non-Elvis fans, think that Elvis met a 14-year-old and dated her until they divorced in 1973. Some of the non-Elvis fans even think that Elvis got a 14-year-old pregnant. Some even think that Priscilla was 14 when she moved to Graceland. 14 when they got married this is how ridiculous it is guys this is how this is how successful this book was and how stupid the interviewers have been the interviewers that have interviewed priscilla for the last 40 odd years have been stupid because they've been conned and tricked and brainwashed this book they treated this book as if everything in this book is truth so they have made four, the interviewers have made fools of themselves. And Priscilla can't believe that this con has been so successful that the public have been so gullible and stupid and are still believing her now. To this day, Priscilla is believed by the interviewers. And my proof is look at the Pierce Morgan interview. Look at how ridiculous that interview was. You guys, if you haven't watched the Pierce Morgan interview, Guys, go and watch it. You'll be amazed. She's still carrying on this story, answering the questions 
from this book. This is one of the most successful books, lies, in my opinion, for entertainment purposes, ever written. Ever. She deserves a gold medal for just how much she has tricked the world with this book. Yeah? You get what I'm saying, guys? You get what I'm saying? Very clever. And the public fell for it. Uh-uh. Anyway, you get my point. So, uh, let's have a look. I began the part when she was at Graceland. The withdrew the part. I might be wrong. Yes, I, I thought the part was when she was at Graceland. The withdrew part, I might be wrong. Let's have a look. Um, Louis, I do believe that Lisa said it was just making the point of how Priscilla is always changing what she says. Uh, I might be wrong. Debbie, no, I, I read it out on here, uh, Debbie. It's definitely in there. Pop stars, I mean, Louis, were living in London at the time. All right, I was getting confused then. <laughs> Joe Hanley. Um, Piers, uh, Teresa, uh, Priscilla is always changing a story. She does know what to say anymore behind the lying. Yeah. I'm having dinner, so I have to go. Oh, bye, for Bex. See you later, Bex. I hope, I hope I didn't upset you. Um, yes, David Cassidy, come on. I like David Cassidy. He was cool. Right. So it's pretty obvious we don't have enough time to do the thing I was going to do with Linda's book because I've got to go soon. But don't worry because we'll come back. We'll do another one. Now, tonight we're going to the carnival in town. There's a big carnival event. Um, I'll just quickly show you it, where we're going. So um, I, I won't be able to do another live, I don't think. Um, it's called, it's the Western Supermare Carnival. It happens every year. The kids love it. So this is where we're going tonight. I'll quickly show you, and I'll try and carry on reading a few more messages. Let's have a look. Ooh. Carnival, got to spell carnival right. There we are. <laughs> so, this is where we're going tonight. So, loads of floats. They call them floats, don't they? Let's see if I can get it to focus. Yeah, so this is where we're going tonight, guys. Yeah, we're all off there. So we're all going to freeze because it's absolutely freezing. That's what we're doing tonight. We're going to have a kebab as well. Uh, I think we're leaving around five. So um, I was going to do one more live before we leave. But I, I'm not sure if I can now. I was hoping to read Linda's email, but it doesn't matter because... Uh, we can save that for another day. She made, right, Elizabeth, she made it seem like she went with him right away. Oh, what time is that? I just thought, right, okay. I've got to get Yasmin from school, but not yet. Um, So Joe says, yeah, I was I, I was a group. I had such a great time, though. Joe Hanley had a great time. We all did. Come on. In the 80s. Woohoo. George Michael and wham. Brilliant days. Brilliant days. I even even in England, we had punk and rockers and mods and bikers. All of that. I experienced all of that. It was really good. I liked it. The punk days were good. Uh, it was uh, it, it said Priscilla was matured beyond her years phys physically also compared to other peers. Well, Chicky Blue, you say that. I, I've heard that many times, but she was tiny. She was tiny, wasn't she? So mate, I, I, I don't know. I'm not convinced by that, even though I have heard that. Oh, Jane, I hope we, we will have a good time. I'm going to wrap up warm because it's it's going to be cold. So um, anyway, um, I'm going to sort of wrap it up in a second, but yeah, I, that's what, th thank you for saying. So yes, 
And but the sensei, I ask you this: How long did Elvis not see Priscilla for? The period when she was sending him letters, yeah, um, and she was sending him records, and I and I think he may have phoned her a couple of times. How long was that period? What month did he leave Germany? Someone did tell me this. So he meets her for between two and six months in Germany. Yeah, they become good friends. <clears throat> He's obviously taken by her beauty. She was very beautiful, unusually beautiful. But then how long was the gap before she went to Memphis, to Graceland for a holiday in 1962? How long was it? I So let's have a look. So two years she came to visit. Yes, but how long? Was it two years, two and a half years, nearly three years? Just two years. What was the actual month that Elvis went back? Actually, I will be able to find out the month Elvis went back. Let's, uh, let's Google it. When, when did Elvis return to America. Let's see if it says. Because I know it's around two years, but I'd like to know how, you know, like. So Elvis Presley returned to the United States from the US Army on March the 3rd, 1960. Okay. Let's have a look. Elvis came home March. Thank you for that, so. So now, what let's let's now ask um what month elvis met priscilla yeah then we can work out exactly how long it was what month did elvis meet elvis let's have a look elvis meet priscilla let's have a look. come on then guys right so it says here it was September the 13th, 1959. Yeah. So we can, can we calculate that? October, November, December. That brings us to 1960. Then we've got another three. So six months. Let's just work it out. Come on, guys, you help me. September the 13th, 1959. Now, then we then want to know what month did she visit Graceland for the first time? Yeah. So I calculate that he knew he knew Priscilla for six months. Yeah, six months. So what? I'm just checking your questions. I know. It, I know she came in 1962, Pamela. Yeah, he left in March. So let's work out. What month did Priscilla go to to Graceland's? You guys are probably going to work it out before me. Well, Chicky Blue, was she? Do Chicky Blue, do you honestly think she was still a virgin? Seriously, do you? Can I, Chicky Blue, answer that question. Yeah. <laughs> what month did Priscilla first? Visit Elvis in America. Visit Elvis at Graceland. Yeah. The joys of Google. Okay, you guys have probably answered it. Um, so it says here, Christmas 1962. Are we agreed with that? Christmas 1962. That Priscilla Bulo first visited Elvis at Graceland Christmas 1962. Okay. So, uh, Elizabeth, no, it ain't. Now, she moved. Now, yes, she would have moved to Graceland in 63, Elizabeth. But she, so that means, let's work it out. Let's work out. So, if he buggered off, if he went, came back to Graceland's in March of 1960, so she didn't see him. Let's work this out. Um, 
for 19 months. Yeah. Are we agreed with that? She didn't see him for 19 months. So Elvis meets her for between two and six months. They're friends. Elvis also has other girlfriends in Germany in 959. And he has to go back in March to fulfill his obligations, movies, Frank Sinatra show, um, the RCA Victor album recordings. So then he doesn't see her a full year. Then we go another full year round to December when she visits at Christmas. Yeah. 19 months. So we agreed on that, guys. Well, it's no, it's I'm pretty sure it's 62, Elizabeth. Um, but don't worry, Elizabeth, we can get it wrong. It's not a problem. We're learning together. Remember, we're learning together. Yeah, this isn't a test. We're just having a chat over a cup of tea. Um, yeah, I know, Michelle, I know it was just a visit, but I'm still trying to work out how long the gap was when because Priscilla gives the impression this is Michelle this is the this is my point Michelle Priscilla gives the impression in her interviews yeah when the interviewers are asking the question oh so you met him when you were 14 she just says yes and then they move on to the next question she gives the impression that she was with Elvis as a girlfriend from the age of 14 until they got divorced she gives that impression yeah um so i'm trying to just work out the truth well the truth is they met each other we don't really know what went on yeah the truth is they didn't see each other for 19 months 19 months she doesn't say it now don't get me wrong there are some interviews where she says um that there was a gap when elvis went back to Graceland, it's, it, I think it's in the, uh, it's in this book as well. She she longed for Elvis to call her. She does say it, but you look at the more modern interviews. You look at the interviews of the last thirty years, which is a long time, guys. She jumps over it. She jumps over it. She doesn't really say, "Oh, you know, I did. I was fourteen. I didn't see him till I was 17. She doesn't say it. She says. The interviewer says, oh, so you were 14 then when you met Elvis? And she went, yes, I was. Yes, I was. I was so young. Yeah. Does anyone agree with that? Does anyone agree that generally she skips the bit? That actually when she did finally go and see Elvis for a holiday at Christmas, she was 17. When she moves to Graceland, she's eight, more or less 18. Does anyone see how she manipulates the interviewer i i I tell you now i've watched a lot of interviews even pierce morgan said it even pierce morgan said um oh you were 14 when you met him then you were 14. why do they do it all of the interviewers do it oh you were 14 when you met elvis they always start like that priscilla very quickly moves on to the next topic she wants the public. This is all part of the brainwashing, guys. This is the trickery of the interview. She wants us to think that she was with Elvis every day from 14 till the end, till they divorced. She wants us to think the reason they divorced is because Elvis was unfaithful. Elvis took drugs. She, it's nice. It's a nice, tidy little story. Um, this, the tidy story is this. This is the tidy story that has worked for her so well. Elvis and me, the book. Oh, I met him when I was 14. I was so naive and innocent. And then I moved in with him into Graceland. I was kept a prisoner while he was unfaithful. He groomed me, controlled me, then married me. Oh, and when he married me and I had a baby, he didn't want sex with me. Elvis wouldn't have sex with me because I'd had a baby. Oh, and then he was unfaithful and became a drug addict. So I left him. That is the story. She wants us to believe that. Yeah, you get it, guys. This is the con, the trick, because that isn't what happened. That isn't what happened. 
Elvis briefly met a teenager in Germany. He was meeting tens of thousands of teenagers. He was a rock star, a rock and roll star. Yes, there was a connection with Priscilla. He liked Priscilla. She was stunning, beautiful. Elvis didn't want to have any sex with her. She was too young. He made that very clear. She kept pressurizing him, pestering him, writing letters, sending records. This did keep Elvis's interest going. Elvis obviously liked her and remembered the girl that he'd met in Germany that he thought was sweet and innocent, a virgin, which was pretty normal, a guy in his 20s, in the 60s, wanting to get with and marry a virgin, yeah? And then after two years, nearly two years, he allows her to visit him at Christmas, yeah? And they, they still become, the friendship gets closer. It's pretty obvious Elvis is smitten with her. She is, yeah? It's obvious. And now that Lisa Marie is saying that she was 18 when they had sex, I would say that when she does finally move into Graceland, when she's nearly 18 in 1963, they probably had sex, guys. Not a big deal, though. A man in his 20s sleeping with an 18-year-old. No big deal. No big deal. So... Now, remember what then happens. Elvis carries on like a single man. He's still seeing other women. A little bit cruel on Priscilla, I would say. I would say this was tough on Priscilla, that when Elvis carried on having other girlfriends on the film sets, um, you know, like Anne Margaret, that was pretty cruel to Priscilla, but he still classed himself as a single man. He wasn't engaged. Then around 1966, December, they decide to get engaged. We don't know the pressure Elvis was under, but it does seem like he was almost forced to marry Priscilla. Yeah, it seems that way. Under pressure from Priscilla's parents, from Colonel Tom Parker, even from Vernon, Elvis to do the right thing. Plus, Elvis just had his own pressure from his own Christian upbringing, a good Christian upbringing to do the right thing, to do the right thing, yeah? So I've only got a few minutes, guys, but my point is this. So then they get married. Elvis is with her through the pregnancy. He's still going off making the movies. They have the baby. Beautiful Lisa Marie is born, 1st of February, 1968. And then it all goes wrong because then Priscilla is unfaithful with Steve Peck, the dance instructor. So anyway, guys, I'm going to have to go. But... You get what I'm saying, guys? This is more the truth. This is more the truth. And hey, my wife's trying to ring me. i got to go, guys. We've done an hour. If you've enjoyed what I've been doing, get us a coffee, send us a thank you, become a member. Uh, I've really enjoyed spending an hour with you, guys. Love to all of you. Love to Vibex. Vibex, no hard feelings. Love you. And thank you, all of you, for joining in. I send you all love. And I'll see you all later, alligators.